On this beautiful morning, I, Dr. Sandeep Kavde, Assistant Professor, Department of Zoology, is once again pleased to welcome each and every one of you to this informative and interactive online college lecture on scope and applications of reproductive biology, organized by Vaishik Sansthas, Sharachandra Pawar Mahavidale Lonan, Department of Zoology, affiliated to Shivaji University, Kolapur. Dear students, reproductive biology is very important and very interesting subject in the zoology. Here, we have wide variety of, of wide variety of applications of reproductive biology study in medical sciences. Today, we have an expert resource person among us in the field of zoology, who will definitely upgrade our knowledge on the applications of reproductive biology in animals. So I just briefly uh, explain and introduce our today's guest, Professor Dr. R.B. Morris, sir. He, having, uh, he is currently working as a professor in Department of Zoology, Ashantra uh, Chawar Institute of Science, Satara. He, he is having the 31 years of teaching experience and the research experience. His area of specialization, uh, toxicology, animal physiology, developmental biology, and he has published a number of research paper and having the wide knowledge in this uh, zoology subject. So I request our today's guest uh, to start with their lecture, respected R Dr. R.B. Moreser. Will you please start with your lecture? Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Am sir. I audible? Yes, sir, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Good morning to all. Thank you so much for nice introduction given by Dr. Kaudi, sir. Before beginning the talk, I would like to pay homage to founder of Padmabhushan, Dr. Karmavir Bhavro Pati. I would like to thank the principal of the Sharat Chandra Pawar Mahavidyale, Dr. T. N. Golab, sir, for giving me an opportunity. I'm also thankful to the convener and the head of the department, Dr. M. A. Patari, sir. Co convener, Sri R. J. Nari, sir, is my classmate and coordinator, Dr. Say, Kaudi, sir. The topic which is given to me in this lead college, it is the scope and application of the reproductive biology. But here, I would give the talk which is based on your syllabus. Okay. And it is quite useful to BSc to students. Okay, sir. Let me share the screen. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. Oh, sir. Okay. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Clearly. Okay. So my topic it is related with the. No, no, no. no. Hello, oh. sir. Hello, sir. Sorry ah. for disturbance. Ah. Will you please start with the share screen option? Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Oh, explore, kara, sir. Explore, kara. Okay, sir. Continue, sir. Continue, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. okay. So our topic is related basically to the reproduction. Okay. So in your syllabus, the title of the topic it is related with the functional anatomy of the male reproduction. Okay. And in that, the various points are added, which include 
the outline and histology of the male reproductive system in human, information of the testes, its cellular functions, then the germ cell, the process of spermatogenesis, hormonal regulation, and the information of epididymis along with its function and the sperm maturation process, and the accessory gland function. And final point is related with the sperm transportation in the male reproductive tract. Okay, so here let us consider first the basics of the male reproduction in human. So here one figure it is shown, it is the diagrammatic figure showing the male reproductive system and this is the colored photograph or the colored picture of this figure. If you see the male reproductive system, basically it consists of the primary sex organs and the accessory or the secondary sex organ. So when we say the primary sex organ, it includes the scrotum. Scrotum it is nothing but a pouch or it is a bag in which the testes are present. And the principal organ, primary sex organ, it is the test. While the accessory or the secondary sex organ, this is the list which shows the accessory ducts, the various accessory ducts are there, then the accessory glands are there, and the external jelly area is there, to which the sperms are liberated into the female genital tract. Now, look at this figure of the male reproductive system. Okay, so this is a diagrammatic figure. It is sketched to show the all the components of the male reproductive system. If you see here, so these are the two bags. In these two bags, the testes are present. It is the principal or the primary sex organ in the scrotal sac. Okay, when you come to the accessory or the secondary sex organ, it includes the accessory duct. So various ducts are shown here. So for example, here, the duct which is coming from the testes, it is called as the vas deferens. Okay. Then surrounding the testes, here a C-shaped structure is present, a gland is present. It is called as the epididymis. Then the ejaculatory duct is also there. If you see the accessory glands, then this, these are the peanut shaped glands. It is called as the corpus gland. At the base, there is present the prostate gland, okay, then here another gland is present, it is called as the seminal vesica, so this is the seminal vesica and the external genitalia, it includes the urethra, urethra it is the tube which passes through this muscular organ that is the penis and which conducts urine as well as the semen, okay. And this penis is only useful to penetrate into the female genital tract, that is into the vagina. So in this figure, in this figure, the entire structure that is the primary sex organ and the secondary sex organ, it is visible. Okay, so it is the diagrammatic figure to show the editor. Here a bulb-like structure which is shown here. This bulb-like structure, it is called as the urinary bladder. The name itself indicates it is a bladder which towards the urine. So when urine, it enters here with the help of these two urators, the bag is get filled and it further dilates. And at the proper time, the urination or the maturation takes place. Okay, now come to this figure. So this is the side view. Okay, so this is the side view. Here, some part of the elementary canal, it is also seen here. So this is the colon, the terminal portion of the large intestine. It is the colon is shown here and, and dorsal to that here the vertebral column is shown with the cause. Now come to this male reproductive system. Here if you see this figure, in this figure this penis it is shown here and inside the penis here is the urethra, this is the tube. Okay. Then the primary sex organ it further includes the scrotum and inside the scrotum this testis is present. The testes on the back side, it is surrounded by the epididymis. Okay. And the glands which are visible in this figure, this is the one of the gland, it is called as the prostate. Okay. This is another gland, it is called as the seminal vesica. And the tubules which are observing here, these tubules it includes, this is the vas deferens, which is coming from the podipididymis. This is the vas deferens. 
and further it is connected to the seminal vesicle and further by joining with the other ducts it is converted into the urethra and which open at the tip of the penis okay so these are the two important figures for the understanding of the further details which are related with the male reproduction okay now come to the next slide when you see the reproduction what is the meaning of reproduction as you know reproduction it is the process of the formation of life from the pre existing life okay or it is the formation or the production of the new individual from the old one it is called as the reproduction each and every organism it reproduces if organism stop to reproduce the continuous existence of that particular species it is get vanished okay so each and every organism it reproduces and it produces the young ones to continue the life further okay when you come to the primary sex organ there are two primary sex organ one is the scrotum and another one is the testicle now let us consider information about the scrotum okay so this scrotum as well as the testicle so inside the scrotum the testicle is present and the male reproductive system it consists of the parts for the basically for the production of the gametes that is the male gamete called as the sperm or the spermatozoa and for the copulation purpose okay now come to the scrotum here scrotum it is called as the male gonads okay so the scrotum in which the male gonads are present or they are situated the testes are situated in the scrotum so the scrotum it is the pigmented pouch of the skin which is arising from the lower abdominal wall okay the wall of the scrotum it consists of the muscles these muscles are the smooth muscles called as the deltoid tunic muscle further the both the pouches they are divided into the compartments by the partition okay that is a muscular septum is present so that it is divided into the right and the left pouch okay for the each compartment it encloses a single testis along with the testis epididymis is there and the testicular end of the spermatic cord it is also present there okay these testes they are located here is the location is given it is located below the pubic symphysis in front of the upper part of the thigh and behind the pain okay then what is the use what is the function of this scrotum scrotum it protects the testes this is the first role and it act as a thermo regulator meaning it is useful for maintaining the temperature okay generally the temperature is 1 to 2 degree less in the scrotum and which is beneficial for the production of the sperm that is the process of the spermatogenesis okay now come to the another primary sex organ the testis testis these are oval paired glands and having 4 to 5 cm long and 2.5 cm wide and 3 cm in thickness each testis having the weight or the mass of 10 to 15 grams the testis generally develop near the kidney that is the process of the development these are developed near the kidneys and they usually descend into the scrotum okay after the birth so they are suspended into the scrotal sac by the spermatic cord each testis it is connected to the wall of the scrotum by a short fibromuscular band which is called as the gubernaculum if the testis fail to descend from the abdomen into the scrotal sac it lead to the sterility that is impotency that is that person cannot able to produce the sperm that is the male gamete 
and that condition is called as the cryptorchidism okay so this is the condition in which the sperms are not produced by the test and come to the function of the test is there are two major functions of the test the first one it is the gametogenic function gamete you know the male gamete it is called as the sperm genic meaning the formation okay so the formation of the sperm it is called as the spermatogenesis okay second function is that the testes it carry out the endocrine function that is it secretes the male hormone so it is the endocrine function so such hormones are directly released into the blood okay now here again the detailed structure regarding the testes that is shown in the sagittal section okay sagittal section is there so this is the scrotum and here inside the scrotum here the muscular layer is present it is called as the tunica albigenia and innermost layer it is nothing but the tunica vasculosa layer if you observe the testes in the sagittal section then it shows the smaller compartments inside due to the formation of the septa so these are the septa so due to the septa compartments are formed and in each compartment a highly coiled tubule is present it is called as seminiferous tubule okay it is called as the seminiferous tubule so all these seminiferous tubules which is convoluted further it mainly form the network it is called as the reti testes after the formation of the reti testes here it comes to the upper end into the capillary epididymis and further shows the coiling it is converted into the single duct and that single duct it come out through the cauda epididymis or the tail of the epididymis and it come out into the single tube and that single tube which is called as the vas deferens okay so here the sperms which are developed into the seminiferous tubules sperms which are developed into the seminiferous tubule here which creates further with the help of the pressure it is created and that pressure with the help of that pressure this spermatozoa move forward and it come into the straight tube that is into the vas deferens okay here behind the testes here if you see the structure which is present this structure it is called as epididymis so this epididymis it is divided into the three region so this is the top portion of the epididymis it is called as the capillary epididymis this is the tail portion of the epididymis through which the vas deferens come out it is called as cauda epididymis and the middle portion of the epididymis it is called as the carpus epididymis or the bod okay now come to the next slide if you see the accessory or the secondary sex organ accessory meaning helpful okay the organs which are helpful in the male reproduction these are the also called as the secondary sex organ it include the accessory ducts and the accessory gland the accessory duct it include the reti testes it is the network of the seminiferous tubule in the near to the capillary epididymis then the vas deferensia then epididymis then the single tube that is the vas deferensia which is for the converted into the ejaculatory duct and the urethra which passes through the penis okay and the accessory glands it includes there are three gland the first one it is the seminal vesicle second one it is the prostate gland and the third one is the cowper's gland okay now come to this accessory duct the first accessory duct it is called as the reti testes okay what is the meaning of the reti testes reti testes here the seminiferous tubules which are coiled in each compartment they are closed at a one end okay but at the other end they join and further it form a network of irregular lobules and this network of irregular lobule it is called as the reti testis okay it is located in the caput epididymis this reti testis further opens into the vasa efferentia 
that what is the meaning of the vasai frenchia so these are 15 to 20 very fine and convoluted ductules smaller tubules or smaller ducts which are arising from the rate testes and it join to the epididymis by piercing through the layer that is the tunica albuginea then come to the third secondary sex organ that is epididymis epididymis it is c shaped organ located on the posterior lateral side of each testis and each shows the presence of a highly coiled duct about 6 meter long they are further differentiated into three regions that is upper wider region is called as the head or cavity epididymis middle narrower portion or the body it is called as the corpus and the lower duct called as the tail of the epididymis or the cauda caput epididymis it receives the vasa efrangia while the cauda epididymis it continues further as the vasa efrangia in caput or in the head region of epididymis sperm it undergo maturation and it acquire increased mobility and the fertilization capacity okay so this is the role of the head of the epididymis or the caput epididymis they are stored for a very short period in the basal portion or the cauda epididymis before entering into the vas deferens further sperms or the spermatozoa which are not ejaculated which are not released they are reabsorbed into the vas deferens again okay now come to the vasa differentia vas difference it is the singular and vasa differentiate is the plural one so vasa differentia these are pair of tubular structure arising from the cauda epididymis okay each vas difference it is about 40 cm long and it enter into the abdominal cavity it continues as a spermatic cord and later it joins with the seminal duct from the seminal vesicle and finally it is converted into the ejaculatory duct okay what is the function of the vas deferentia it carries the sperms from epididymis to urethra so this is the function of the vasa differentia it carries sperms from epididymis to urethra the next structure is the ejaculatory duct these ejaculatory ducts these are the pair of ducts about 2 cm long they are formed by joining of the vas deferens and duct of the seminal vesicle both ejaculatory ducts further opens into the prostatic urethra okay that is the urethra which passes through the prostate gland and they carry seminal fluid and spermatozoa to the urethra okay now come to the accessory gland the first accessory gland it is the seminal vesicle seminal vesicle these are pair of small fibro muscular pouches which are present on the posterior side of the urinary gland and they secrete a seminal fluid containing the citric acid then fructose fibrinogen and the prostaglandin okay so this is the composition of the seminal fluid seminal fluid it consists of the citric acid then the fructose fibrinogen and the prostaglandin about 60% of the total volume 
of the cement it is a made up of the seminal fluid fructose which is a sugar it provides energy to the sperm for swimming purpose prostaglandin it helps in the fertilization by stimulating contractions of the female genital tract while fibrinogen it helps in the coagulation of the semen after ejaculation okay so this is the role of the fructose prostaglandin and the fibrinogen which is produced by the seminal vesicle then the second accessory gland it is the prostate gland prostate gland it is a single definite shaped gland it measures about 4 cm further it secretes a white colored alkaline fluid which is called as the prostatic fluid this prostatic fluid further forms about 30% of the total volume of semen and it neutralizes the acidity of the vaginal secretion and at a ph of 6 to 6.5 the sperm become motile and such motile sperms they are helpful for the process of the fertilization okay now come to the another accessory gland that is the third accessory gland which is called as the corpus gland other name of the corpus gland is the bulbo urethral gland so these are p size gland and it lie on the either side of the membranous urethra they secrete a viscous fluid which neutralizes acid that may be present in the penile urethra due to the previous urination as well as it also lubricate that is the secretion of the corpus gland lubricates the vagina of the female genital tract at the time of the copulation okay so this is the role of the corpus gland or the bulbo urethral gland now the semen which is produced that semen let us consider the information of the semen semen it is the whitish fluid containing spermatozoa and a mixture of the secretions from the seminal vesicles prostate gland and the corpus gland it is ejaculated during the sexual intercourse which is also called as the coitus and 3 to 4 ml of the semen it is released in a single ejaculation it contains about 300 million sperms okay so in 3 to 4 ml of the semen 300 million sperms are present but as you know only one sperm is necessary for the fertilization So, despite the fact only one sperm it fertilizes the ovum, large number of the sperms these are released to ensure the process of fertilization. Okay. Now come to the external genitalia, which includes the urethra and the penis. Now the information of the urethra. this urethra it is the common passage urethra it is the common passage for the flow of urine and the semen hence it is called as the urinogenital passage okay this urinogenital passage it is further divided into three parts the first part which passes through the prostate it is called as the prostatic urethra then the membranous urethra and the part which is passes to the penis it is called as the penile urethra so the prostatic urethra it is surrounded by the prostate gland and it carries urine only okay membranous urethra it is situated between the ends of the prostatic gland and 
roof of pen and it carries both urine and the semen while the penile urethra it is situated in the pene again it carries both urine and semen like the membranous urethra further it passes through the corpus spongiosum of the penis hence it is also called as the spongial urethra now come to the information on the penis penis it is cylindrical it is erectile and pendulous structure it is located in the pubic region in front of the scrotum generally it is small and limp in unerected condition but on a sexual arousal when there is excitement at that time sexual excitement or sexual arousal the penis become long hard and erect erectile tissue of the penis it consists of the blood sinuses so in that blood sinuses blood flows and the make making this penis erect which is helpful in the process of the coitus or the copulation the tip of the penis it is called as the glans penis which is enlarged glans penis it is covered by a very thin loose retractile or retractable fold of the skin which is called as prepuce now come to the histological structure of the testicle if you see the histological structure of the testicle we know that the position of the testis testis it is the male reproductive organ which is located inside the scrotal sac located at the base of the penis okay if you take the transverse section here in this figure the ts of the testis it is shown which is showing the seminiferous tubule cut in the section okay so this is the single seminiferous tubule here shown here these are the other seminiferous tubule so this is the, the central one it is the entire seminiferous tubule if you observe the structure the testis it consists of the four major component the first component it is the tunica albigenia second component it is the seminiferous tubule third component in between the seminiferous tubule these are group of the cells are present called as the interstitial cells or the leading cell and here the connective tissue blood vessels these are the blood vessels connective tissue and the nerve fibers these are also present here now look at this picture in this picture the transverse section of the seminiferous tubule is shown so this is the connective tissue this connective tissue is shown the bunches of the cell known as the leading cells or the interstitial cells these are the blood vessels some are the nerve fibers are also there and here the circular area which is there the circle is there it is nothing but the seminiferous tubule cut in the section if you have the seminiferous tubule here at the basal end there is a presence of the cells these are the cells okay the cells are called as the germinal epithelium okay so this germinal epithelium it germinates and it divide and redivide further to produce this spermatogonium okay and this spermatogonium it is converted into the primary spermatocyte then the secondary spermatocyte and the finally spermatids further converted into the spermatozoa but in the central lumen the spermatozoa are shown here here is the central lumen where the spermatozoa are present here now the in between this germinal epithelium germinal epithelium it is not continuous but it is interrupted by such a longer cell these longer cells supporting cells are called as the sertoli cells or the sustentacular cells okay so these giving the nourishment again to the spermatozoa so this is the structure which is observed in the ts on the transverse section so as you know each testis it is a wide compound tubular gland it is covered by a capsule that capsule is a fibrous 
which is called as the tunica albuginea. Further, it sends many septa or the partitions into the substances of the testes and dividing it into the many compartments. And each compartment further consists of the number of seminiferous tubules, which ultimately join to the reti testes. Further, it forms the vasai furnishia and the posterior side of this fibrous capsule, it is get thickened to form the mediastinum. The spermatic artery, the spermatic artery, as well as the nerve fiber and the connective, they enter into the testes through the mediastinum. Okay. Now, seminiferous tibia. Each seminiferous tubule it is lined by the stratified germinal epithelium. Okay, it is called as the stratified germinal epithelium and it is resting on the basement membrane. So, such germinal epithelium it consists of two types of cells. The first type of cell it is called as the spermatogenic cell, and the second type it is called as the Sertoli cell. Spermatogenic cells. These are fully developed into the seminiferous tubules and it is morphologically differentiated cells. Further, it divides and redefines and further differentiates into the variety of the cells, which include the spermatogonia, then the primary spermatocyte, secondary spermatocyte, spermatids, and the sperms. Okay. So these different successive stages, these are easily visible. These are seen in the process of the spermatogenesis. If you see the spermatogonia, these are oval or the spherical cells containing spherical nucleus. And these cells further develop into the large cells, which is called as the primary spermatocyte. Each primary spermatocyte is during a reduction division. Reduction division, it is known in the meiotic division. That is the chromosome number, it becomes half. Okay. So, in the reduction division, gives rise to the two secondary spermatocytes, which are smaller in size and each immediately divides mitotically into the two spermatids which are further transformed into the mature sperms, also called as the spermatozoa. So each mature sperm, it shows the three regions, that is the head, then the middle piece, and the movable or the motile tail. So this is the structure of the sperm. So three regions, head, middle piece, and the motile tail. The head of the sperm, it consists of the male nucleus. Okay. This head of the sperm, it is attached to the pointed part of the Sertoli cells. While their tail, it extends into the lumen of the tibia. So this is the arrangement of the attachment of the spermatozoa. Okay. So the tail it is freely moving here. This is the Sertoli cell which is attached to this basement membrane and these various stages that is the spermatogonia and the primary spermatocyte. So these are the various stages, cell, differentiated cells, they get attached to these Sertoli cells, also called as the sustentacular cell. So these Sertoli cells, these are large, tall and the conical cells which are extending between the basal membrane of the tibial to the lumen. Each cell, it contains a oval nucleus. Each cell, it contains a oval nucleus at the base. What is the function of the Sertoli cell? Three functions are carried out by the Sertoli cell. The first one, it gives the mechanical support and protection to the maturing sperm. So it gives support mechanical support and protection to the maturing sperms. Second function of the Sertoli cell, it gives nourishment to the developing sperm. Nourishment meaning the nutrition. Nutrition is given to the developing sperm. And third function is that it helps 
in releasing the matured sperm in the lumen. When the sperm become matured, it is released. So, with the help of the Sarkovi cells. So, the seminiferous tubules, it forms the exocrine part of the testes. Seminiferous tubule forms exocrine part of the testes and their secretion is carried by a minute duct like straight tubules that is called as the vasa effrontia. Okay. Now come to the endocrine cells which are present in between the seminiferous tubule. These are called as the leading cell or the interstitial cell. So these are located in the spaces between the seminiferous tubules and further these are also surrounded by the connective tissue. Such a rounded cells, these are called as the interstitial cells which are in close vicinity in the blood vessels, meaning blood vessels are also present close to the interstitial cell. These interstitial cells or the leading cells, this is the another name, it is interstitial cells are also known as the leading cell which secretes the hormone testosterone. So it is the male hormone. Leading cell, it secretes the hormone testosterone as these cells, it constitute the endocrine part of the testicle. This hormone, it is responsible for the development of the secondary sexual characters in the man. Okay. So the development of the secondary sexual characters, these are under the control of the testosterone. You know the meaning of the secondary sexual character. So in case of the man, the voices get changed. Okay. Masculine voice. Then the mustache, these are developed. The hairs are developed on the skin, okay, as well as into the genital region, surrounding the genital region. So these are the development of the secondary sexual characters, as well as the muscular nature of the man is under the control of these testosterone. Now each seminiferous tubule, it has a short straight tubule and the several straight tubules it converts to form the mesh or the network. And the vasai franchia, these are seen into the epididymis attached to the testicle. Okay. Now come to the another structure that is the epididymis. Epididymis, it is connected to the testes on its inner side. Further, it consists of three parts that we have seen, that is carpet epididymis, corpus epididymis, and the coda epididymis. Okay, anterior portion is caput, the middle portion is the corpus, and the tail portion, posterior end, is called as the cord. Epididymis, it produces the male sex hormone as well as here. This epididymis, it is useful for production of the secretion, which is helpful for further to carry the sperm forward into the vasa differentia. Okay. Then come to the process of the spermatogenesis. Spermatogenesis, it is the process of the formation of sperm. Okay. So spermatogenesis, it is nothing but the formation of the haploid, having the half number of the chromosomes. These are microscopic and motile, meaning the movable male gametes. It is called as the spermatozoa from a diploid spermatogony of the testes that is the which is present into the male organism. So spermatogenesis it is nothing but the formation of the sperm. So that entire process of the spermatogenesis it takes place in the male gonads called as the testes. Testes show the presence of the seminiferous tubules, which are lined by the cuboidal epithelium called as the germinal epithelium. Okay. So the cells of the germinal epithelium, it undergoes spermatogenesis. Cells of the germinal epithelium, it undergoes spermatogenesis to produce the sperm. In between the germinal cells, circular cells are there. 
and the Sertoli cells, it provides nourishment to the sperm that we have seen. Now come to the process of this spermatogenesis. So this is the diagrammatic figure in which the stages of the sperm formation is shown here. That process is called as the spermatogenesis. Okay. This process of the spermatogenesis is divided into the four phases. So these are the four phases. The first phase, it is the multiplication phase. Second phase, it is the growth phase. Third phase, it is the maturation phase. And the final phase, it is called as the spermiogenesis. Okay. Now, in the multiplication phase, this spermatogonium, which is the diploid cell containing the 46 number of the chromosomes in man, here, this cell, it further divides. It enters into the growth phase. Okay, the growth takes place and converted into the primary spermatocyte. Okay, only there is a growth takes place. The chromosome number it remains constant, that is the 46. <coughs> Sorry. Further, this primary spermatocyte it shows the first meiotic division, that is the first reduction division, and the two cells are formed. It is called as the secondary spermatocyte. Okay. It is called as secondary spermatocyte. Now, the secondary spermatocyte, it consists of the 23 number of chromosomes. Okay. So, the chromosome number, it becomes half. So, it enters into the maturation phase. The meiosis first stage, it is present into the maturation phase. Further, the secondary spermatocyte, it again divides. Again, a meiosis takes place. Okay. So, this is the second meiotic division and again the chromosome number, it remains constant here and only the cell division takes place and the four spermatids are formed from the two secondary spermatocytes. Meaning, one secondary spermatocyte, it is get divided into the two spermatids and further, each spermatid which consists of the applied number of the chromosome, it is get converted into the spermatozoa or the sperm. So, conversion of the spermatid into the spermatozoa, that process is called as the spermiogenesis. Okay. So, this is all about regarding the stages of the spermatogenesis. So, these are the phases. That is the multiplication phase, growth phase and the maturation phase. So, with the help of these variety of these changes, the sperms are get uh, doubled. Okay. And such sperms which are produced, it further, they are provided with the proximal and the distal centriole. They are provided with the mitochondria, which get spirally coiled. And it is also provided with the Golgi complex to form the acrosome. Okay. So, such non motile spermatid, it undergoes the process of the spermiogenesis to become motile, functional male gamete, which is called as the spermatozoa. Now, what is the significance of this spermatogenesis? In the process of the spermatogenesis, the haploid sperms are produced. Second, due to the process of the crossing over during the meiosis first, Crossing over, that is the exchange of the chromosomal segment, it takes place in the meiosis first. So, it leads to the production of the variation. And it is also useful, it proves the evolutionary relationship. Okay, so this is the significance of the spermatogenesis. Now, come to the structure of the sperm. If you see the structure of the sperm, the sperm, these are microscopic elongated, haploid, and the motile male gametes. Okay. If you see, there are about 60 million sperms are there. Okay. And these sperms remain viable for about 72 hours. 72 hours. But it can fertilize the ohm in the first 12 to 14 hours only. Okay. Each sperm will show the three regions that is head, neck, middle piece, as well as the tail. If you see the head, 
this head it is a flat oval region it consists of a large nucleus and an acrosome this acrosome it secretes hydrolytic enzyme like hydrolase which helps in the penetration of egg during the fertilization okay so in the head region which is useful for the secretion of the hydrolytic enzyme okay so that can easily penetrate into the egg during the process of the fertilization okay now the neck portion it is very short region having the two centrioles so the two centrioles are located in the neck region proximal centriole plays role in the first cleavage of the zygote while the distal centriole it give rise to the axial filament of the sperm so this is the role of the centriole now the middle piece if you see it is the powerhouse of the sperm it has many mitochondria which are spirally coiled around the axial filament these mitochondria it provides energy for the movement of sperm in the female genital tract mitochondria as you know it is a powerhouse of the it provides energy for the movement or uh, it gives motility to the sperm in the female genital tract while well, the tail portion it is a long slender tapering structure it is formed of the cytoplasm and a very fine thread of the axial filament it arises from the distal centriole which transfers the middle piece of the tail and it provides motility to the sperm now see the figure so here is the structure of the sperm which is shown this is, this is the sketch figure where actually the pencil sketch it is shown showing the head middle piece and the tail head with the acrosome then the nucleus the middle piece is with the centriole as well as the mitochondria centriole is located in the neck region and this is the tail portion with the filament Okay, of the axial filament. This is a color photograph of the sperm head region with the acrosome and the nucleus. This is the middle piece with the proximal centriole and the distal centriole, as well as the mitochondria. And this one is the tail with the axial filament. Okay, now come to the hormonal regulation. Hormonal regulation of the spermatogenesis. Okay. hormonal regulation of the process of the spermatogenesis okay as you know that the hormonal regulation hormones these are secreted by the endocrine glands such hormones play important role in the process of the sperm formation that is the spermatogenesis you know that the hypothalamus okay it is the part of the brain which secretes the gonadotropin releasing hormone gonadotropic releasing hormone it is secreted from the hypothalamus which further stimulates the secretion of the two hormone that is fsh follicle cell stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone lh hormone it is also called as the interstitial cell stimulating hormone which are released from the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland this lh that is the luteinizing hormone it stimulate interstitial cell that is the leading cells of the testes to secrete the androgens principally the principal androgen is the testosterone fsh that is follicular cell stimulating hormone it stimulate the sertoli cells of the germinal epithelium to secrete an androgen binding protein abp it is androgen binding protein which concentrates testosterone in the seminiferous tubules while the sertoli cells it also secretes a protein hormone which is called as the inhibin so inhibin it is the hormone secreted by the sertoli cells which suppresses fsh synthesis okay or which is useful to suppress the follicular cell stimulating hormone production this fsh 
it acts directly on the spermatogonia to stimulate the sperm production. So under the control of the FSH, the sperms are produced from the spermatogonia. Here is the entire process of the hormonal regulation of the spermatogenesis. It is shown here hypothalamus, it releases the gonadotropin releasing hormone, the FSH and the LH releasing hormones, these are liberated. They further act on the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland so that anterior lobe of the pituitary gland is activated to secrete the FSH and LH. FSH act on the Sertoli cell. LH hormone further acts on the leading cell so that the leading cell it secrete the testosterone while the Sertoli cell secrete the ABP. Okay. Further, it activates the germinal epithelium and the process of the spermatogenesis start and finally the sperms are produce. Okay. Here, there are some certain negative feedback or the inhibitory factors are there. When the sertoli cell secretes the inhibin hormone, so the negative feedback is started. So, it gives signal to the anterior lobe of the pituitary that it don't secrete the FSH hormone. Okay. So, that the sertoli cells are not activated and the further process is stopped. So, in that same fashion, the testosterone it also having the negative feedback, it acts on the anterior lobe of the pituitary, that is, don't secrete the LH hormone, so that the leading cells are not activated and the testosterone, it is not get secreted. Okay, so this is the hormonal regulation of the process of spermatogenesis. Now, here is again the regulation of the testosterone secretion. LH or luteinizing hormone are the interstitial cells, the muting hormone, it is the important hormone in the male which stimulate the leading cell to secrete the testosterone. So in absence of the LH, interstitial cell, it undergo a tropy and they stop the function. And the testosterone is essential for the development, structural and the functional maintenance of male accessory reproductive organs. Okay. Now, further point related with the regulation of the spermatogenesis, so maintenance of the structure and the spermatogenic function of the seminiferous tubule, it totally depends on the action of FSH or the follicle stimulating power. Sertoli cells of the seminiferous tubules have FSH receptors. And FSH also shown to bind with the specific receptor, FSH receptor attached to the Sertoli cell, which causes Sertoli cells to grow and secrete the various spermatogenic substances. This FSH, it is also known to stimulate spermatogenesis, but it cannot complete the maturation process into the sperm unless the testosterone is present. So testosterone is essential for the maturation. Therefore, to initiate or to begin the spermatogenesis, both FSH and the testosterone, it is necessary. But the if seminiferous tubule fail to produce the sperms, the secretion of FSH by adenohypopysis increases and when the spermatogenesis proceeds too rapidly or too fastly, the secretion of FSH, it is diminishes or it is get low. So the cause of this negative feedback effect on the anterior pituitary is because of Still, another hormone which is called as the inhibin hormone secreted by the Sertoli cells. So, this hormone it inhibits or it stops the secretion of FSH. Okay, and it is possibly also has a slight effect on the hypothalamus as well as inhibiting secretion of the gonadotropic releasing hormone. Okay. Now, this is the actual track. By this track, the sperm transportation in the male is carried out. That is, seminiferous will produce a sperm. It enters into the reti testes. From reti testes, into the vas afferens. From vas afferens, it enters into the head of the epidermis. Then into the duct of the epidermis. Further enters into the vas afferens. Then it goes into the ampulla finally enters into the ejaculatory duct and it came into the urethra. 
Okay. So there are various hormonal factors. It stimulates the process of the spermatogenesis. So these various hormones, which include the testosterone, then the luteinizing hormone from the anterior pituitary gland, FSH, again secreted by the anterior pituitary, then estrogen, which is produced by the sertoli cells, and the growth hormone, it is also necessary for controlling background metabolic functions of the testes. Okay. So this growth hormone specifically, it promotes early divisions of this spermatogenesis, spermatogonia. In its absence, in absence of the GH, the in a pituitary dark spermatogenesis, it is a severely deficient or upset. So in such a dark condition, pituitary dark condition, the spermatogenesis it is severely deficient or upset, thus causing infertility. Okay. Now the maturation of the sperm in epididymis. Sperms are mature, they become motile and they are having ability to fertilize the ovum. So that ability is given by the epididyme. So after formation of the sperm in seminiferous tibial, the sperm requires several days to pass through the six meter long tibial of the epididyme. So sperm removed from the seminiferous tibial, it enter into the early portion of the epididyme is so these sperms are initially non-motile and they cannot fertilize the ova. However, after the sperm have been in the epididymis for some 18 to 24 hours, they develop the capacity or the capability of motility, even though several inhibitory proteins in the epididymal fluid, they still prevent the final motility until after the ejaculation. Okay. This is regarding the storage of the sperm. Each testis stores about 120 million sperm in the adult the human each day. Okay. So this is the storage. They remain stored and maintaining the fertility for at least a month. But after ejaculation, sperms become motile and become capable of fertilizing the ovum. That is the process of maturation. And the Sertoli cell and the epithelium of the epididyme, which secrete the special nutrient flu, that is the nourishing flu, it is ejaculated along the sperm. And this fluid contains the hormone, testosterone, and the estrogen, as well as the consist of the enzymes and the special nutrients that are essential for the process of the maturation. So, this is regarding the story of the sperm. If you see, the physiology of the mature sperm. This is the physiological process which is given, which is given in detail. The normal fertile sperms, it is capable of the flagellar movement through the fluid medium because of the tail. And the velocity is 1 to 4 mm per minute. And the activity of sperm, it is greatly enhanced in a neutral and a slightly alkaline medium. Okay. As the ejaculated semen, it is greatly depressed in the mildly acidic medium. So a strong acidic medium, it can cause the rapid death of the sperm. So the acidity is not visible to the motility of the sperm. So death appears. The activity of the sperm increases markedly with increasing temperature but so does the rate of metabolism causing the life of the sperm to be considered really, it is shorter so life becomes shorter to the temperature so although sperm can live for many weeks in the suppressed state in the genital tract of the testicle so the life expectancy of the ejaculated sperm in the female genital tract it is only for one to two days. Meaning for one to two days, the sperm having ability to fertilize the egg. So this is actually the life expectancy. Okay. 
So this is all about regarding the various aspects which are related with the male reproductive system, which is included in your syllabus. So thank you for your patience listening. If the students have any question, they can ask. Me. So anybody having any type of the questions? From students, any questions? Hello, Kode, sir. Ah, sir, yes, sir. BSc two chhe vidya thi kiti hoti ho? Sadaranta BSc two chhe equis. Equis. Ani itar kutle hoti ka? Ah, FI chhe hoti kai? FI BSc. Stage. Okay. Actually, ha jo topic hai, ha ena bara vila thoda par pramana zhali lai. मोरे सर who deliver the wonderful and inspiring talk on this uh, reproductive biology so your talk will definitely be useful for the students and as well as the participants i express my sincere out of thanks to dr rb more sir for sparing his valuable time in guiding our students and the successfully conducting an online lead lecture sir our students will always be inspired from your presentation talk i express my sincere thanks to dr t n golop sir principal sharachandra pawar mahavidyalaya lonan for his constant support and guidance i am also thankful to head of the department uh, zoology dr m a patare sir assistant professor arjun ali sir as well as all the faculty members for their active support and cooperation at last but not least not the least i thank all the students for patiently listening and attending this online lead lecture thank you once again thanks to our today's resource person jai hind jai karmir okay thank you so much sir Okay. So thanks to us. So we will end end today's little lecture. Thank you, thank you, participant students.